everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show. It is March 21st and we have Dana with us. I am so excited to have this conversation. Dana and I have chatted a hundred times before and I am excited to celebrate her podcast, her incredible knowledge base working with multilingual learners and so many other incredible tools for you guys to get kicking off your morning. We'll be right back. morning. My name is Ray Heward and we have Dana here with us who is a very familiar face to the Teach Better family. Dana, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Thank you for being part of this morning's conversation. You are a very like well-connected educator. I know a lot of people in our family will be very familiar with the work that you do. But in case we have some new faces here today, do you mind sharing a little bit about yourself and what you do in education to start us off? Yes. So um, the ways I'm connected to the Teach Better team are that I blog. Um, I'm a Teach Better ambassador, and I also have my podcast out of the trenches on the uh, Teach Better podcast network. Um, So I've hosted my podcast for almost four years now, And um, it has almost 300 episodes, so I've consistently put that out weekly or biweekly. I currently work in the middle school level. Um, I coach teachers on best strategies to um, help with their multilingual learner students and also just as a system as a whole and how we can, um, you know, move the needle forward for our newcomers and all uh, levels of multilingual learner students. Oh my gosh. You, I don't know how you do all of that in a day. You are a very, very, very busy educator. And I know that I love your podcast. I know many, many of our, you know, educators here listening will already have been subscribed, but friends, if you're not familiar with Dana's podcast, it's a really great place. There are a ton of interviews, great information. I want to make sure that you all go over there and subscribe to that podcast. Dana, can you give a little summary of what educators can expect when they go check out your podcast? So the title's Out of the Trenches, and I always ask guests, tell me about a time when you were in the trenches and managed to crawl out. And I did interview Ray a few years ago, so if you want to look up her episode. (laughs) Um, And so everybody will focus on a story where, you know, it was a difficult time for them, but they persevered and showed that story of resilience. And, um, you know, I, everybody has a different take on um, their, their own story of resilience. So, um, you know, I interview authors, um, well-known authors sometimes, and then just the regular classroom teachers, uh, other people on the Teach Better Network um, that you might have heard of, but there's a lot of people out there that um, might connect with me that I hadn't heard of and just want to share, share their stories. Um, and then I wrote a book that was published a little over a year ago, uh, from Road to Awesome, that um, is out of the trenches, stories of resilient educators. And it talks about um, my story and how I persevered in education for 24 years, along with uh, some stories of my guests and also tips for self-care and um, just uh, like how do you uh, redefine your why as your career goes on. I've always loved your title, Um, so I'm so glad that you have this theme going. I know that that's something that a lot of our community here will connect with. And as somebody who subscribes to your podcast, I can just recommend it as a listener that I love hearing other people's stories and, and hearing how... There's so much resilience happening in education, but in, in, in addition to that, just so many people doing good things in the field. And I really appreciate that you're able to highlight not only those well-known stories, but also just the everyday in the trenches educators that can share what they're working on. I don't know how you balance the mix of your of your time, because in addition to the busy podcast, the book, and everything else, You're also in a middle school full time, which has Uh its own ups and downs, I'm sure. What brought you to the middle school community? That's definitely my favorite age group. But what what Mm -hmm. landed you over there? 
Well, I mean, a lot of my career was spent, I would say, up until around uh, 2018 in the high school level. Um, I taught French for about 13 years, and then I taught English. Um, and then I just kind of stumbled upon middle school. Um, I've been in various uh, administrative roles, Dean, AP, um, TOSA, like behavior TOSA. And, um, you know, I think it's that middle level where you're like, um, you know, they're they're just finding themselves out there. They're, they're getting to... Um, be familiar with like who they are and, and those types of things. And, um, you know, I think it's, um, it's good to really um, focus on strategies at this point, because uh, I'm in Denver, and we get a lot of newcomers. Um, so in major cities in the US are getting a lot of newcomers from Central and South America. So, um, you know, whether or not there's an influx right now, or there might be in the fall, or there's going to be people coming, um, that might be from Latin America, but also from Africa or other countries that need support. And I think just making sure we're honing in on how to support these uh, students who are at varying levels of English. Um, I have learned several languages myself and you know, know those acquisition, acquisition strategies. And I think um, this year when I'm also working a little individually with students, um, I've really improved my Spanish, which wasn't that great before. And I'm sure I'm guessing on a lot of words because I know French, but uh, it's like, it, it gives me a little bit of, um, you know, I, I would say just um, ownership of like learning another language just through uh, the people I'm interacting with as well. So that gets me excited as well. <laughs> You know, I want to dive into that further because I know our community here is going to be so eager to find ways to connect with all of our students, including those who may speak multiple languages, whether it be with family at home or somewhere else in their life. So we're going to dive into our team talk section so we can get some tips and tricks on how to support those students even better than we are right now. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us here on the Teach Better Today morning show. We are just diving in to a number of different things celebrating the work that Dana is doing, but especially highlighting how we can reach all of our learners. Obviously, it's bright and early in the morning. We're getting ready for a day ahead. We've already had some time this week that we're slowly just trying to go through, push through the end of the week. And of course, many of us are trying to do our best to reach every single learner every single day. And we're going to start with some tips and tricks that might be helpful for our community today. Dana, when you think about the type of support you can provide, you, you do already provide teachers, whether it be on the podcast or in the coaching you do, what's a simple go-to strategy for educators to consider as they persevere through this Thursday? Well, I think when you're getting newcomer students, um, like uh, the first of all, the school usually does some type of a screener. So we assess their level of English, right? But we don't know if all of our students are computer literate. We may have students who are refugees. Like sometimes in the schools in the U.S., we assume that all students know how to use a computer. So uh, that's one piece, right? Um, and then giving the screener, you know, we'll see, like, are they beginners? Are they intermediate? Are they advanced students? But um when they do this screener, they might be very nervous. They might not really show what they know. So that doesn't always give us accurate details. Um, and then also it's knowing like, is a student literate in their home language? Um, if your district has um, the possibility to do some type of uh, assessment, um, my district's looking into something called a STAR assessment for Spanish or other languages where students were able to know, like, are they literate in that language? Have they had years of schooling that they've missed? Uh, they have a home language survey, so it'll say, um, you know, the language they speak at home, but 
for some African countries, for example, they might have an official language in which is school and learned, but they also have a tribal language they speak at home and they know that language a lot better. So those, those types of things as well. And then as a teacher, if you're teaching a content area, don't assume that you can just Google translate everything because that's what I'm trying to have a lot of the teachers at my school unlearn um, because, you know, technical vocabulary, if they don't understand like seventh grade science and, you know, the experiment and they might not be very literate in their home language, then they're not going to get much out of that Google translation. So what's better to use is... Um, visuals. Um, you know, if you have anything that can be graphics when you're doing um, like an experiment, um, also do it just short um, and concise. You can do it in English, but, you know, really those action verbs as well. Um, also having student ambassadors for your new students, right, um, that speak a similar language. So, um, for example, if there are students who um, I've had students in the past who spoke, who were from Turkey, but they spoke a little bit of Russian. And then I had students from Ukraine who spoke some Russian. So we paired them up and they were like uh, buddy students for several weeks while that new student transitioned. So having that student ambassador kind of show the student the ropes and how things are done at your school and you know what to expect during lunch and passing period and all those types of things help. Um, and then um, after the student's been here, I would say one to two months, if you're pairing the student with these buddies that speak similar languages in the classroom, move them away from those students because it can quickly become, you know, actively social and, you know, not so involved in what's going on in class, just rather speaking their home language. So um, I would say gradually release those scaffolds. So if you're doing some translations, I would say some to start out with, but not Google translating everything gradually move away from all those translations and those extra scaffolds. Uh, the more they're immersed in English, the more they're going to learn. But you do have to provide those visuals. You have to provide, um, you know, the comprehensive input for your students and also do a lot of check-ins. And if you have any um, paras or anybody in your building who um, is an adult who might speak their language, um, you know, that can help translate some things that you're not sure of, um, what the student's understanding, then that would also be a resource as well, like a family liaison or somebody like that. Districts often have like cultural liaisons for um, other languages um, like Russian or Chinese that you might not have somebody at your school that speaks, but you can also get that person to come in and help assess like your student's level of literacy, your student's um, comprehension of what's going on in your co content area after a few months and things like that. So definitely reach out to people in your district and um, you know, parent, parent conferences also help a lot to understand like the student's background um, in schooling. Cause a lot of that, we don't know when they're filling out this home language survey and when they're enrolling, it's that big uh, question mark, like where are they with their math knowledge and those types of things. Mm, so many good ideas here. I feel like some of us are going to have to re-listen to all those suggestions because depending on what situations you're in, some of those suggestions are going to be more applicable than others. And I know Dana is a great resource to brainstorm with. So don't forget that at the end of the show, we'll be sharing her contact information so she can be an ally for you in this process. Another thing that I know you are very well versed in, Dana, is coaching teachers and supporting them in technology. You are mm -hmm. constantly trying to share new ideas for educators to be more efficient, more effective, and just try and be their best self while they're exploring the successes of this profession. Any ideas that we can challenge our community here to think through, to consider as we wrap up our week? How can we ensure that our Teach Better community is better every single day? Well, I think it's really reflecting on your uh, professional growth. Um, something I speak on at conferences is really devising that PD growth plan. And, you know, we're airing this episode now at late March, kind of mid to late March. So it's really, um, you know, we're coming back from spring break or you might currently, currently be on spring break and you have one quarter left in the school year. So what are you um, thinking of getting better at? And that's, you know, as you end the school year, but going into the summer, um, you know, what is something you'd like to change? Because you ultimately have control of your own professional growth. A lot of my growth I get from listening to podcasts, from watching this type of, um, you know, input from the Teach Better team and other um, 
other educational leaders, but um, you know, it could be something like you taking a course over the summer, um, attending an institute, right? I would often do that uh, before I got my doctorate so I could get the, the salary increment, right? So if you're thinking about doing that over the summer, that's a good idea. You can earn a lot of uh, credits that way. Um, but, you know, your district might not provide a ton of PD. So it's, it's up to you a lot of the time to figure out what do you need to know more about to help in your job. Um, as you plan for next school year. And, and I love that we're, we're personalizing what educators need to grow by identifying what is most interesting and where the needs are, which is exactly what we should be doing for our students. So I ask you, our community, how are you doing? Can we do a little audit, a little reflection today to see how we can better support you? And then can we get you connected to people to do that? Obviously connecting with Dana, will be a great step in that direction, especially if you're not sure how you want to grow. Maybe the first step is to listen to the diverse podcast episodes that she has offered so many educators thus far to be able to say, hey, do you know everything in the space that that you're passionate about in education and trying to find the right way to support all of you as you pursue whatever growth goals you have. Dana, before we wrap up our conversation here, I would love to make sure that we get your contact information so our community here can choose to reach out to you, connect with everything that you're already putting out into the world, and then also add you to their PLN, the growing, growing PLN that we have here. So um, as you see on the screen, that's my X handle. You can also find me on Facebook at Dana Goodyear. On Instagram, it's out of trenches PC. I'm also on LinkedIn. My website is danagoodyear.com. As I said, you can subscribe to the podcast on the Teach Better team, um, the podcast um, network. There's all podcasts also on um, iTunes, things like that. Um, you can find my book on Amazon, Out of the Trenches, Stories of Resilient Educators. And uh, yeah, just shoot me a message. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about strategies for uh, scaffolds for multilingual learners, um, more about developing your own personalized PD growth plan, or if you just like to chat about how you can get out of the trenches. I love this. Friends, I listen to Dana's podcast every single new episode on Apple Podcasts. But of course, if you have any issues connecting with her content, you can reach out to anybody on the team, including going to the podcast network and finding her there. Dana, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I hope that everybody is enjoying whatever spring break vibe some of you might be experiencing, whether it's just before or just after we're catching you. But we very much appreciate all of you in our network and continuing to reflect on the growth you're going to make. Dana, thank you again. This is so fun. Thanks for having me. For everyone else, we hope you have an amazing day. And don't be a stranger. Reach out if you need anything. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, We would love a five-star review. (laughs) The comments are always so entertaining. (laughs) We'll see you tomorrow. 